Howdy folks. So today I wanted to take a look at this, which is a Coolmax power supply tester. I pulled this out of uh, a bin at work quite a number of years ago. And uh, the only reason why it was binned was because this little green LED here for the 3.3 volts is burned out. And that's it. Um, so of course you don't even need that to use the thing because it's got an, L it's got an LCD which tells you what the actual voltage is. So uh, I don't know. Um, whatever. So I wanted to uh, take a look inside this uh, and see exactly what they were doing, um, what kind of uh, chips were in here, uh, because this thing is pretty simple. Um, for those of you who've never uh, used one of these things before, you basically just plug in the motherboard connector here, CPU connector, PCI connector, floppy, um, Molex, uh, and uh, with those you just then hold the power button and it uh, will tell you what all the different rails are. Um, it'll beep at you if they're out of tolerance and it'll tell you how many milliseconds it took from the time you push the button to the time the power supply gave you a power good signal. And um, it's, I mean, it's really simple. So I, I wonder what's really in here. Um, now, of course, you could just bridge the, um, the connector on the power supply and then use a multimeter to measure the other voltages. But the problem with that is some power supplies require that you have a minimum load on them, uh, at least older supplies, newer supplies not so much, but the older ones you did. So I'd be interested to see if there is a resistor or something in here that puts that minimum load on, uh, on the power supply to see if it's, it's even measuring correctly. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. So let me just uh, hook this up to an old power supply just so you can see what it does. So I just got out one of my really shitty Seasonic uh, power supplies that I just sort of have on standby in case anything uh, anything in service dies. Um, I would not trust these things with my life. Um, they're just so terrible. But anyway, so I just connected the motherboard connector in here, um, floppy and Molex, although, I mean, it's pointless because these are just strapped together, but whatever. Um, and then of course the PCI Express and the uh, 12 volt CPU, I only plugged half of that and it doesn't matter. So when I uh, press and hold this button, so you can hear the uh, the power supply is now running, and uh, this backlight in here is really bright. Um, I should have set manual exposure, but uh, you can see the plus five volts is 4.9, um, the 3.3 is 3.3, so that little green LED is totally useless, and uh, the 12 volt one, uh, what they call rail one, sitting at 12.6, and you'll notice here it has 12, uh, basically 12 volt two. Um, and that is uh, the CPU and PCI Express uh, rail. So, uh, of course, we've also got 5 volts standby, uh, minus 12 volts. And then we have this thing, which is PG, and that means power good. And that's the uh, basically the number of milliseconds from the time you press the button to the time the uh, power supply good signal uh, came on and basically told the motherboard to come out of reset. So if that, uh, if that number is important to you, um, I guess, uh, you know, you can read it here. But uh, basically this tester assumes that the rail that's used for the, uh, the power that comes in on uh, these three connectors is different from the rail that comes in on these two connectors. And the reason why is if I unplug the, uh, the CPU supplementary power connector and the PCI Express connector, what'll happen is it'll now beep low on the 12 volt two rail because it's missing uh, it's missing something from uh, from one of these two connectors. Uh, either one will satisfy it. Um, I'm not sure how this power supply is designed. I'm not sure if it's actually the same uh, the same one or not, but uh, it doesn't really matter. So that's what this thing does. Um, I think it could be useful to have. So anyway, um, it's uh, it looks like it's already been taken apart by somebody before. So. Uh, I'll just uh, rip that screw out and uh, we will see uh, what's inside. It does, you notice it doesn't even have a model on it, which I think is uh, it's kind of unusual. It may have been there at one point, but uh, it's not there anymore. So I don't even know uh, what this is. Hmm, interesting. To the bench. So we're on the bench and uh, here it is. So. I'm going to guess that by the uh, single screw on the back, 
that's how this thing opens. This does not feel like a normal screw. That was awful. It's like trying to unscrew it and it was going the opposite direction. Oh, it looks like it's going into some sort of plastic. Oh God, this could be a little horrible. So this is all in one aluminum case. So I'm assuming it's got to slide out of one of these ends. Yes, that end. So that's just a plastic clip on. And okay, the power switch is going to be a little fun. Oh. I'm starting to see things. What is holding this on? I'm not quite sure. It might be the power button catching on the LCD uh, glass. That's my guess. And I wiggle the power button down a little bit. No, I don't. Tell me that I pooched this already. Ah, screw it. I'll just pull it really hard. Yeah, it was probably that. So anyway, this is just a simple aluminum, uh, looks like an extrusion to me. Nothing special, just a piece of plastic inset there. And uh, this is our little button which sits on top of this peg right there. So, this is uh, what's inside. And the first thing that you'll notice um, is we have a big ass ceramic resistor here, five watt, 33 ohms. So this must be what they're using to generate that, uh, that minimum load um, for, uh, for older power supplies so they don't oscillate and do all sorts of funky business so they can get accurate measurements. So uh, I was I was hoping I'd see that, and it is there. It's got one of those uh, it's one of those ceramic type that's got the two leads on one side rather than one on each end like you'd normally expect. So on the top here we've got um, we've also got this, which is the insert that uh, that screw goes into. So that's pretty much what's holding this on. They just put a screw through this through the board, and the board attaches to the bottom of the case, but nothing attaches to the top of the case. Not the greatest design, but anyway. So we've got the three LEDs for the quick indication. So obviously the one in the middle is burned out and I could honestly replace it if I had one, but all the LEDs I have are bigger than the five mil, not the three mil. So too, too bad. Uh, just a bunch of standard PC connectors, which are all soldered. Uh, these are all through hole, but the, uh, the Molex is soldered surface mount, interestingly enough. Um, almost looks like it was done by hand. Yeah, it was. You can see flux residue. So they soldered this one by hand. Interesting. We've got uh, some smoothing caps here made by Micon brand. Yeah, whatever. Uh, we have a diode, buzzer, some transistors, and a 4 megahertz crystal. Uh, obviously our LCD module here, which has got pins on both sides. And uh, it's got the backlight module, and it's just got some foam blocks that are just holding it off of the board there so that... Uh, it's closer to the top of the enclosure. And uh, we've also got this connector here, which they just call it pin six. They've all called all the connectors pin something. Um, so this this would be, that's not a computer connector that I know of. Um, so I'm gonna guess that there's some sort of programming header or something for whatever this chip is because that's pretty much all that's on the back. We've just got some resistors, um, some bypass caps, a little uh, Zener diode there. Um, this thing called U1, which is maybe a regulator or a transistor or something. Um, and uh, just one chip. So this chip is the 
Holtec HT46R64. Um, so this, my guess would be this is some all-in-one um, measurement IC um, specifically designed for uh, for this kind of purpose. Um, I'm not sure if there is firmware in this or not, or if this is a... I, I bet there is. I bet that there's firmware in it. But it's probably got a bunch of uh, A to Ds and stuff that can do all of the conversion. It's got, actually got to have a timer so it can do that power good signal timing. Um, it probably runs off 5 volts or so. That uh, would be my best guess. I'm not going to trace out the board to figure that out because I really don't care. I can just get that from the data sheet. So here is our, um, here's a part number, PS-228 Rev 2.4. So um, I'm not sure if that relates to the actual consumer model of this. I'll, I'll, I'll Google that and look it up and see if I can find anything. But uh, we've got a date code of late 2009. So this is actually quite, this was actually a few years old when I got it, so uh, it obviously was in service for a while. These uh, these connections here, the ones that look really nasty, these are actually for uh, the backlight. Um, you can see this this box, this silvered box underneath here. It's got K and A for the anode and cathode of the uh, the LED that runs underneath here. So uh, yeah, that's interesting. So uh, yeah, I mean it's it's sort of what I expected. It's it's pretty much an all-in-one chip solution. Um, they've just got uh, a big resistor and a buzzer and some LEDs. It's uh, not terribly interesting, but uh, that's that's I guess all you need really. It's just a very simple single-purpose multimeter basically. So uh, yeah, uh, I may I may replace the LED if I can find one, but. Uh, yeah, that's that's what's in it. Do you need it? Not really. Just stick a resistor on a power supply and use a multimeter. Uh, unless you know, unless you're on one of the newer ones. Most of the newer power supplies, the Haswell um, ones, for example, they uh, they generally are designed to work with like five watts or ten watts of load on them. So generally speaking, you may not even need this. This may be unnecessary to uh, to validate that it's working properly. But uh, I mean, if you're really going to test a scope, you, or uh, really going to test a uh, power supply, you put it on a scope under load and you watch the waveforms. That's how you really test a power supply. But uh, I only buy Seasonic power supplies, so I've never actually had one go bad on me. So uh, yeah. Anyway, now I'm just waffling. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that was interesting to someone. Thanks for watching.